Arden Leith Arkin Love. At the far end of town, where the grickle grass grows, and the wind smells slow and sour when it blows, and no birds ever sing excepting old crows, is the street of the lifted Lorax. And deep in the grickle grass, some people say, if you look deep enough, you can still see today where the Lorax once stood just as long as it could before somebody lifted the Lorax away. What was the Lorax? And why was it there? And why was it lifted and taken somewhere from the far end of town where the grickle grass grows? The old Wunsler still lives here. Ask him. He knows. You won't see the Wunsler. Don't knock at his door. He stays in his lurkim on top of his store. He lurks in his lurkim, cold under the roof, where he makes his own clothes out of miff muffered moof. And on special dank midnights in August, he peeks out of the shutters, and sometimes he speaks and tells how the Lorax was lifted away. He'll tell you, perhaps, if you're willing to pay. On the end of a rope, he lets down a tin pail, and you have to toss in 15 pence and a nail and the shell of a great 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 grandfather snail then he pulls up the pail makes a most careful count to see if you've paid him the proper amount then he hides what you paid him away in his snuff his secret strange hole in his grovulous glove not to be confused with the snuffs wearing gloves from all the things you can think then he grunts, I will call you by whisper my phone, for the secrets I tell are for your ears alone. Down shops the whisper my phone to your ear, and the old Wunsler's whispers are not very clear, since they have to come down through a snurgly hose, and he sounds as if he had smallish bees up his nose. Now I'll tell you, he says, with his teeth sounding grey, how the Lorax got lifted and taken away. It all started way back, such a long, long time back. Way back in the days when the grass was still green and the pond was still wet and the clouds were still clean and the song of the swammy swans rang out in space. One morning I came to this glorious place and I first saw the trees. The truffular trees, the bright coloured tufts of the truffular trees, mile after mile in the fresh morning breeze. And under the trees I saw brown barbar loots frisking about in their barbar loot suits as they played in the shade and ate truffular fruits. From the ripulous pond came the comfortable sound of the humming fish humming while splashing around. Mm -hmm. um. But those trees, those trees, those truffula trees! All my life I've been searching for trees such as these. The touch of their tufts was much softer than silk. And they had the sweet smell of fresh butterfly milk. I felt a great leaping of joy in my heart. I knew just what I'd do. I unloaded my cart. <laughs> In no time at all, I had built a small shop. Then I chopped down a truffula tree with one chop. And 
with great skillful skill and with great speedy speed, I took the soft tuft and I knitted a sneed. <coughs> the instant I'd finished, I heard a gazump. I looked. I saw something pop out of the stump of the tree I'd chopped down. It was sort of a man. Describe him? That's hard. I don't know if I can. He was shortish and oldish and brownish and mossy. And he spoke with a voice that was sharpish and bossy. Mister! He said, with a sword of his sneeze, I am the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongues. And I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs. He was very upset as he shouted and puffed. What's that thing you've made out of my truffula tuft? Lorax, I said. There's no cause for alarm. I chopped just one tree. I am doing no harm. I'm being quite useful. This thing is a need. A need to find something that all people need. It's a shirt. It's a sock. It's a glove. It's a hat. But it has other uses. Yes, far beyond that. You can use it for carpets, for pillows, for sheets. Or curtains, or covers for bicycle seats. <laughs> the Lorax said, Sir, you are crazy with greed. There is no one on earth who would buy that fool's need. But the very next minute, I proved he was wrong. For just at that minute, a chap came along. And he thought that the need I had knitted was great. He happily bought it for three ninety eight. I laughed at the Lorax. You poor stupid guy. You never can tell what some people will buy. I repeat, cried the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I'm busy, I told him. Shut up, if you please. I rushed across the room and in no time at all built a radio phone. I put in a quick call. I called all my brothers and uncles and aunts and I said, listen here, here's a wonderful chance for the whole once a family to get mighty rich. Get over here fast. Take the road to North Niche. Turn left at Weehawken, sharp right at South Stitch. <laughs> And in no time at all, in the factory I built, the whole once the family was working full tilt. We were all knitting sneeds just as busy as bees to the sound of the chopping of truffula trees.